Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be learning about all of the mods that make managing a server much easier. The first problem you're going to encounter as a server manager, if you try and enable dev commands, it'll say, oh, enabled, see, dev commands true, but then when you try and do anything, oh, fly is not valid, not valid. You can't actually do any of the dev commands with vanilla Valheim, unless you download the server, or you use a mod called server dev commands. Server dev commands is one of the incredible mods by Jerry, as usual, and it's all but mandatory for anybody interested in managing a server. These are not mods that your players need to use. Your world itself will still be vanilla. It could even be a world you upload to a dedicated server that is then played on by Xbox players. Okay, these mods do not require the player themselves to have mods. That's what this video is about. So now I've exited out of Valheim, and I'm going to enable the server dev commands mod. And if I open the console, you can see it's automatically authorized me to use dev commands, but I'll do it again just to show you. Now when I actually type the commands, look at that. I can use all of the dev commands on the server live as if it was downloaded on single player. That is why this mod is so incredibly useful. It opens up your server, allowing the admins to customize it. Regular players can't just open the console and enable dev commands. You have to add the player's Steam ID onto a list. In addition to that, the server dev commands mod has to be installed on the client for them to even try. In summary, the server dev commands mod is necessary for you to use dev commands and also for almost all other mods that I'm going to show you. They won't function without also having this server dev commands mod installed on the server. Moving on to the next one. As players play on your world, they're going to really rapidly, sometimes within a couple days, consume most of the local resources. Not only that, but also all of the key progression areas that are nearby and convenient are going to get stripped and looted. This is going to create an experience where new players come and they find stuff and it's just empty and then they find something else and it's just empty and they often just give up and go play somewhere else or make their own world. And that's exactly where Upgrade World Mod comes in, also by Jerry. This mod allows you to respawn stuff. And what's so cool about that is you see this crypt is respawned and normal, right? Anybody can just use it. It's there. It's available for regular players. Upgrade World mod allows you to reset locations, which are things like dungeons or the abandoned ruins and houses that you find in the wilderness in Valheim. It gives you full control over which locations are reset. You can filter it by biomes, by zones. It's incredibly flexible. But I won't get too much into that because I know that is a bit technical. Upgrade World Mod may look a bit confusing, but it really is easy to use once you get the hang of it. It's all about just learning the names of the locations that you're interested in resetting. The next mod we'll look into is called Discord Connector. Discord Connector hooks your server up to Discord, allowing you to show player chat and also show player deaths, raids, player joins, and all the messages are customizable. It's a really powerful mod because it shows people what's happening on the server without them having to log on. And this results in people being able to play together more often. It's a really healthy mod for your server. And again, it's server side. Your players don't need to install anything. And then we have cron job. So if you look in the chat here, you'll see that whenever a player joins or also dies, the server says, welcome to the path to Ashlands, and then says the player's name. And you can customize this message using cronjob. It's basically making the server react to events that happen, such as player's death. To make your cron jobs, you'll need to install cron on the server. It's only server side, don't worry. And I can show you what mine looks like. Here is our cron commands. And you can see that there's a whole bunch of them and it functions fine. It didn't seem to make anything more or less laggy. So don't worry, I'm not gonna explain all of this and what's going on, because a lot of this is just sort of 
uh, flavor text, role-playing sort of stuff. So you don't need to worry about it. This is a command that makes the server save every 10 minutes instead of the default every 30 minutes. And this is another saving command that makes the server save on the 58th minute of every hour. You can also make all sorts of announcements and that sort of thing that get rolled so they come up randomly instead of happening every 10 minutes or every 20 minutes. But you could also do that. I just find that it gets really repetitive. So you have to make stuff really infrequent so that it sort of surprises people and that's when it works well. Cronjob allows you to schedule and automate things in a way that you can't normally. And speaking of that, it's really important when you use any kind of admin work or dev commands, make a character that's specifically for dev commands, and then have your regular character that you never use dev commands on. And to make it even more inconvenient for yourself, Whenever you're gonna play normally, just turn the server dev commands mod off in the first place. This way, even if you try to when you're actually playing, you can't use dev commands unless you close Valheim, enable this, and then launch Valheim back up. I hope that you find these mods as useful as I have running the Path to Ashland server. Personally, I find that these mods allow us to overcome a lot of the typical conflicts that arise in Valheim players. Early on, there might be some conflict with the people who can play more often and they're able to get to the resources faster than others. <laughs> but then you get to the swamp, and this is where things sort of change. And it is a pain to get that iron for a lot of people. And they want that iron. Yeah, people, people have a thing with iron. Now, don't shoot the messenger. I, I'm just saying what, what I've seen. When people know that the dungeon is gone, and once it's gone, it has no use for people anymore, aside from mushrooms. And that's something that respawning dungeons helps alleviate, because people aren't as protective and, and feisty over the sunken crypts that have the iron in them when they know that, oh, it's okay, because the swamp just comes back to life every week. I, I personally find that the Upgrade World mod adds a lot. That respawning really, really helps make things work out well. And if you'd like to support me or my work, then consider renting a Valheim server for yourself. You can get one using my link, jpvalheim at zap hosting, or you could use any other provider, really. And if you want YouTube to recommend more Valheim videos to you, then all you have to do is like this video or any other video about Valheim, and YouTube will start dishing out the content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.